This episode of Congratulations is brought to you by the Cash App. Crazy, 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 crazy. A question, actually. So, hey, what's up? It's uh, it's Chris D'Elia, and here we are. Uh, we're live on my app. Uh, let me go through some dates here uh, that I got coming up. Uh, some cities and some dates. Uh, <clears throat> Durham, North Carolina. There's a few tickets left. Las Vegas. I'll be there on April 26th. Uh, Des Moines and Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls, um, May 2nd and 3rd. Fargo, May 4th. Um, Edmonton, Alberta, May 18th. Victoria, B.C., May 19th. Uh Memphis, Chattanooga, and Knoxville. That's the 27th through the 29th. Uh, Tarrytown, New Buffalo, Michigan. Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I got all these coming up. San Jose. So that's uh, that's what I got coming up. Uh, and we have to uh, make sure. Why are there two cameras? Are we doing two angles now? No? Okay, there's just two, ta- two cameras for no reason. There's one dummy cam. Uh, so... Um, we hope you enjoyed the April Fool's joke that we did on your ass, babies, and uh, whatever Theo calls his guys, gang, gang. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing that shit, um, and and we, I, who knows if we'll do it again? Maybe we won't. But either way, we hope you liked it. We both got more fucking. We, we, I mean, we should just switch each other's podcasts to be honest, but because it's like uh, it just fucking did so well. Broke the internet, as they say. Uh, But it was really fun, and it was really cool to do. Uh, Whatever. But, you know, I was on the road in Albuquerque. Dude, I want to start this fucking show, actually, by doing this. This is so funny, man. Okay? There's there's a weird... I've, I've got to the point where no matter what I say about anything on Twitter, somebody's offended. It doesn't matter. It, it really sincerely doesn't matter. Uh, we live in a really sensitive time. A lot of people are pretending that their feelings are hurt, and a lot of people's feelings are actually hurt. However, um, I just – I don't think about shit. My Twitter isn't really for comedy. It's just for me doing dumb shit. Like I don't give a fuck about it, you know? So uh, I tweeted – I was in the Albuquerque airport, and the uh, the my flight was delayed for about two hours. And it's a, and and it was just I was looking around at just how weird Albuquerque was. Albuquerque is, is so Albuquerque. Like there's so many fucking like the artwork is just so I don't even know what to call it. It's like every other fucking painting is of a stick figure like this, you know, and like Tetris like pyramids. I, I don't know where they got that or what the fuck it is. You know, I I I, I f- figure it's very Mexico inspired, but. Um, I just tweeted, bro, Albuquerque, you know, I've been to some shitholes, but holy God, you make Jacksonville look like paradise. Whatever. Jacksonville, Albuquerque, you got some great people. Actually, I had a great time in Albuquerque doing my show, but once I left the show, where am I? People live there for some reason and it's all good. Now, here's the thing, dude. If I'm in LA, fine. Somebody says they fucking hate Los Angeles. I go like this. Ah, cool. If I'm from New Jersey, I'm from Montclair, New Jersey. If somebody says, "Hey, I'm I'm from uh, Montclair, New Jersey," sucks. I go like this. (laughs) That's it. I don't get my feelings hurt because I am not my place. And if someone says, "Hey, you suck," sometimes I get my feelings hurt, but most of the time I go like this. Huh? Grow your skin. All right, so I tweeted this, and I didn't even think about it because I was just in the air, airport, and I was just like, Jesus Christ, this fucking place, you know? Imagine living here. It made the news. At Original Medicine Wellness Center, Pissed. our approach to treatment is both functional Pissed. and regenerative. Pissed. There's an ad. Reserve Fuck this ad. Never go here. Fuck ads on. You in a more natural look, way. It's always a woman Original with this voice. As a medicine wellness center. center. Close ad. Get out of here. This is what it said. on the. I made a se- It was a segment. Dude, this is the funniest fucking thing. Good afternoon. Albuquerque has been a punching bag for a few celebrities as they've made their way through town. The latest, a well-known comedian who bashed the city after... 
playing at a city-owned treasure, the chemo. News 13's Rebecca Atkins is live there with First what of all, said. you call your fucking theater chemo, which is how you help cancer. So all of a sudden, your place is making me think of cancer. Okay? Where are you playing? Chemo. Okay, cool. Cancer. Let's do this show. Let's rock out, guys. <laughs> hey. Hey, cancer. Ah, oh, cool. Let's rock out. Here we go. You guys ready? Where are you playing? The Cancer Dome. Oh, 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 um, oh. oh. Now, here's how bad fucking Albuquerque sucks. I'm playing the fucking thing, and it won't, it won't play. The, the, even the website is like done. They probably took it down because they heard I was fucking around with it. God damn it, motherfucker. What's going on here, dude? Why won't it play? Video will resume in 15 seconds. It says the fucking play. Why won't this play? Oh, God damn, dude. You know what? This goes back to my shit. If you're going to invent something, make it work. Oh, it's not playing. I did. I refreshed. Why won't this work? This is how much Albuquerque sucks. The website won't even play. All right, I'm going to... Oh, here we go. All right. What is this, dude? door company keep your garage door and opener functioning properly call the genuine the original the overhead door company today the overhead door company cool all right i'm just gonna let it play albuquerque has been a punching bag for a few celebrities as they've made their way through town the latest a well-known comedian who bashed the city after playing at a city-owned treasure the chemo the cancer rebecca adkins is live there with what he said and how people are responding rebecca there's a lady live at the place. Well, Kim, according to ticket sales, this is where Chris D'Elia uh, performed last Thursday. But while- According to ticket sales? What? Just Google it. They're acting like they did so many fucking, so much research. Well, according to ticket sales, what do you mean? Because fucking 1,500 people bought tickets to see me? That's not according to ticket sales. Just look. Well... According to ticket sales and geographical location of where the chemo theater was and Crystalia's flight plan. Dude, my computer's broken. Yes! Yes! Woohoo! My computer's broken, dude! And you know, you need one fucking thing for this shit, dude. And a goddamn computer's broken, man. It, you know what, dude? The day, this fucking sucks, man. Dude, I just want one god thing. To, you know what, dude? I've been working so fucking hard, man. I've been going. I've been flying back and forth in fucking cities. Bullshit. I, I mean, I was in Albuquerque, dude. I was in goddamn Albuquerque. I was in fucking Albuquerque. Computer crashed. My No bullshit. My computer crashed. I'm pissed, baby. Woo! What is it? It just fucking done, dude. Here. One fire, dude. No, flying solo, bitch. Dude, I, I, I want one thing to work, dude. I'm fucking, I went to, I went to, I went to Albuquerque. I went to Santa Fe, which is actually really beautiful. Who knew, dude? It's so beautiful. It's like heaven. You go to Santa Fe, I swear to God. And I went to, I went to, uh, I, you go to Albuquerque. And when I was talking to people to Albuquerque, they're like, where are you going next? I was like, Santa Fe. And they were like, oh, good luck. Hey, you know what, dude? Do you know who you are? Santa Fe is beautiful, man. If I die, if I died and woke up in Santa Fe and Jesus Christ was like, you got to live for the, for the rest of your life. I'm like this. Smooth sailing, dude. There's hot springs. There's fucking 10,000 waves. There's a place called 10,000 Waves where you can just go and chill and hear water falling and, and get massages, and it's a spa. And you live there, dude. You can live there. I would go there. That's heaven, dude. My fucking computer's broken because I tried to check a website about Albuquerque. That's how fucked Albuquerque is. It's a virus. And, you know, and, and so I went... And so I'm, I'm, so I'm there. I'm in Albuquerque. I'm in Albuquerque. I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm in Phoenix. By the way, Phoenix. I love Phoenix, dude. Every time you go to Phoenix, dude, I swear to God, Phoenix is the number one place where groups of people wear the same thing and hang out and walk around together. It's unbelievable. You'll walk around. You'll see ladies with, like, blue shirts on with, like, you know, a shoulder fucking 
what do they call those things that general have generals have for no fucking reasons? You'll see like four ladies with white pants and fucking blue shirts on with like those general. What do they call those fucking st- epaulets? Yeah, having a fucking epileptic 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 seizure. It's n- not even a joke, you know. Just trying, just you do the joke. So a fucking you you'll see a guy you'll see a bunch of guys with just like some red Ohio State shirts on for no reason and they're just walking around. Dude, I swear to God, I saw more people. I saw more groups of people wearing the same shit than I saw anywhere else in, in total in my entire life in the one day I was in Phoenix. And I want one thing for the fucking thing sh- for the thing to do. I want, to, I want this to work. And I got to travel all around the world. I have one day in LA. I come. I land. Shoot for fucking you because I'm going to do season two. I'm shooting all day yesterday. Okay? And then I come here. I got to do my podcast. I got one day in LA to do all my errands. And I got to do my podcast. And the computer doesn't work. That's all I ask. That's all I ask, dude. I got to get my fucking car towed yesterday. It's been in my driveway for three days. I mean, three weeks. Because I haven't had a chance to call fucking AAA. I call AAA. They get my car. They fucking uh, hook it up to the fucking tow truck. Guess what happened, dude? No bullshit. They, they crashed it. They scraped it. The, the bumper is broken. It, it's a chip. It looks like a fucking chip tooth with some, like, some kid you'd know in like fourth grade. Named Kodir. And, and I had a buddy in, when I was in elementary school. His name was Kodir, and he was in second grade. He had a chipped tooth, and dude, his name was Kodir. And he and and I said, and he was so good at talking shit to people. He was so good at making fun of people. And I was like, "Hey, Kodir, this guy's making fun of me. What should I do? I I need to make fun of him. What should I call him?" And he was like, "Oh shit, man!" I was like, "Well, you're really good at it." He was like, "Just call him a big bunch. Whoever's make he said, "Whoever's making fun of you, I will never forget this." He said, whoever's making fun of you, just call them a big group of dumb conchinchi monkeys. What's a conchinchi monkey? Is it a real thing? Just call them a group of conchinchi monkeys. <laughs> Quit dear, dude. He said, man, just call them a group of conchinchi monkeys. <laughs> and I was like, conchinchi monkeys? He was like, yeah. I said, okay. And then I fucking, the guy was talking shit to me. And I was like, hey, man, you know what? You're just a conchinchi monkey. Anyway, I want the one fucking thing. So they crashed my car, and then the lady called me up, and she was like, hi, do you want us to fix your car before we – because the, the reason why I called AAA was because the tire was flat. And they were like, do you – and I'm not – oh, 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 and guess what, dude? I'm not changing it. I don't have a spare anyway, so that's out the door anyway. But she was, she was like, oh, do you want us to fix your bumper before we take it in, to, before we bring it to, to Audi to have them do the tire? And I was like, fix the bumper? What are you talking about? She's like, oh, there's a little scratch. I was like, nah, nah, because I just figured it was mine. She was like, oh, okay, well, because we, we did this and that to it, and, it, and then it ended up scratching. I was like, hold on, you did it? And she's like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, I want, yeah, well, then I need you to fix it. Are you kidding me? What happened? And she was like, she sent me a picture of it? Bro, it's, it's, it's got a fucking... Straight up, what's not in my bank account? A dent. It's got a fucking dent right in in the. It's like big, and so I I uh, so I was like, yeah, you got to fix that. And they were like, okay, we'll fix it. I was like, no, you're bringing it to an Audi approved body shop. And they're like, oh no, we could do it. I said, no, 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 that's not how it goes. So they're like, okay, let me get in touch with my supervisor. Hey man, supervise it all the fuck up, man. I don't give a shit. Anyway, dude. These problems seem so nothing. But my point is I want my goddamn computer to work. So here is what Good happened. Good afternoon. Albuquerque has been a punching bag for a few a celebrities you know as I mean? they've made their way through town. The latest, a well-known comedian. Who- I was on stage when I was on stage talking about Albuquerque. I said, you know what Albuquerque is like? It's like a place. Oh, no, I said this in Santa Fe the day after. I said, you know what Albuquerque is like? It's like a place. It's like if the whole world blew up. And then they were like, okay, well, I guess we've got to start from scratch. And then nine years later, this, this is what they had. They're like, we, we, it's kind of impressive we did this in nine years, but also it's not as good as it was. That's what Albuquerque's like. A post-apocalyptic nine, year, nine, years after the post-apocaly- nine years after the apocalypse. That's what Albuquerque's like. And they're like, yeah, we only got the buildings this high, but we have a fucking theater that we called chemo by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and it's right next to fucking Cancer Mart. Ah. 
Hey, we have the fucking Tumor Valley. Uh, fucking what do you call it? <laughs> the Tumor Valley. Oh, fucking, I swear to God, dude, I can't remember words and shit. What is the fucking house that moves? Mobile home. Um, uh, dude, I'm so fucking. Uh, so this is what I. So then I said on on Twitter, I was making fun of Albuquerque because if you live in Albuquerque, you got to know where the fuck you live. Don't pretend this shit isn't Narnia. The buildings go this high. You got to crouch down to get into any place. Ash the city after playing at a city-owned treasure, the chemo. News 13's Rebecca Atkins is live treasure. there with what he said and how people are responding. Rebecca. There's Rebecca always with the way too long okay, pause. Hey, to news, sales, newscasters, where- dude. When they're j- jump on the last sentence. If you're in the field, jump on that last sentence. Jump on it. We're going live to this is me. We're go, this is me if I'm a newscaster. We're going live to Crystalia in the field uh, to see what some of the locals have to say about hey guys, how's it going? I'm cutting them off. I'm feeling it out, dude. Rather than that's way better than we're going live to the field, Crystalia, to see how locals feel about what he said on Twitter. Hi, how's it going? Uh, I just want to do this too long, man. I could eat lunch in the middle of that pause. That pause is so fucking long. A baby came out of it. So. So Stalia performed last Thursday, but while he was here, he had some sort of a bad experience. No, you're a you're bad news. I didn't say I had a bad experience. I just said Albuquerque. Then it goes and shows a little bit of my Netflix shit. I'm coming out on stage. Actor Chris D'Elia is a big name in the then comedy world. Then they kind of throw a little bit of shade night. by just calling me an actor. You know what I mean? By letting me know, you know what, dude? You say other people's lines, dude. He performed at the chemo theater. Yes, sir. I know I look like a tired eagle. Um, I don't like how you laughed at that, to be honest. Okay, all right, all right. It was his second time in Albuquerque, but something on this visit left a bad taste in his mouth. Who writes this shit, you know? It's amazing. But something about this visit left a bad taste in his mouth. By the way, they've shown the theater in this video 14 times so far. Get more footage. So much of this shit. From the top, dude, this is such a news. To get the top of the theater and then come down. (laughs) At the chemo theater. But something left a bad taste in this comedian's mouth. He tweeted on Twitter that Albuquerque wasn't good. We've talked to some of the locals... To see what they have to say. Always fucking panning down, dude. Just show it. You don't have more footage just because you're moving the camera. We can tell. Dude, guess what? Every time they do this, too, they fucking come down and there's a parts plus auto parts fucking car drive by. Same footage. Also, parts plus auto parts. If parts is in your fucking title twice, change it. Parts plus auto parts. Come on down to parts plus auto parts. Where will parts if you parts? And parts, that'll be parts 50, please. Parts plus auto parts? Dude. Too many P's. <laughs> parts plus auto parts. plus parts. Part em, depression parts. Part em, part plus. Piss in the piss parts parts. Dude, get it together, Albuquerque. You have a fucking auto place called Parts Plus Auto Parts and also a theater named after cancer. Dude, even Death Valley is like, we wouldn't have done that. What? Even Regina, Saskatchewan is like, wow, they fucked up with their titles. And we rhyme with vagina. Dude, Regina? Are you kidding me? That's like naming your city Pox pox Suckers. (laughs) Regina, dude. Hey, guys, where are you from? Pox Suckers. Wait, what? Like. Did you say cocksuckers? 
No, I said pock suckers. That's a place because Regina is a place. I got to start over the fucking goddamn thing, and now the ad's not working. Great, because I, because I waited too long. Because the because Albuquerque is obviously in some sort of deficit that now I have to watch another fucking ad for the overhead door. It's 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 fucking it's the overhead door is what this fucking company is called, dude. Hayashi Japanese Steakhouse. Look at these places of in in serving hot, fresh, and authentic. Look at these places in cuisine. Albuquerque. Exotic flavors, fresh choices. Oh, Hayashi, fresh Japanese choices. <laughs> fresh choices. Okay. Good afternoon. Here Albuquerque go has been a punching bag for a few celebrities anyway. as they've made their way through town. The latest, a well-known comedian who bashed the city after playing at a city-owned treasure, the Chemo. News 13's Rebecca Adkins is live there with what he said. And they're how all wearing what you'd think they're wearing, by the Rebecca. way. Well, Kim, according on, to ticket Rebecca. sales, this is where Chris D'Elia performed last Thursday. But while he was here, he had some sort of a bad experience. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And Thursday night, he performed at the Chemo Theater. Plus, plus auto parts. I know I look like a tired eagle. Um, I mean, I hate this joke already. I don't like how you laughed at that, to be honest. It was his second time in Albuquerque, but something on this visit left a bad taste in his mouth. Left a bad taste. Here comes Parks Plus Auto After Parts. After his performance Here downtown, he took to Twitter to take a jab at Albuquerque, saying, I've been to some blank holes, but Shit holy holes. God, you make Jacksonville look like paradise. Good delivery, Post by the way. has been retweeted almost 600. Jacksonville look like paradise. I mean, the, imagine if that's the. Uh, wait, I wish she said, "Bro, Albuquerque." You know, Post I wish she said that part. You make Jack. She didn't say that. Blank part. holes. But- Good afternoon, Albuquerque. No, come on, has dude. Been- Play. Turkey, saying, I've been to some blank holes, but holy God, you make Jacksonville look like paradise. The post has been retweeted almost 600. God, you know what, man? I wish I said something besides paradise just so they had to. Before I put the tweet out, I was like, what's better than paradise? What's a funnier thing than paradise? But I was like, eh, who gives a shit? Paradise is what everybody knows. I wish I, I wish I was more creative now that they fucking said it. It would have been so much better. You know what I mean? Albuquerque, you know. He took to Twitter and said, I've been to some blank holes, but holy God, you make Jacksonville look like the inside of a sloshy pussy. (laughs) You make Jacksonville look like it makes the sound slosh when it walks. Times. I just thought that was pretty rude of him. It was kind of unnecessary to bash a place that you're... Uh, attending this guy People we spoke fuck. to weren't too happy about I mean, dude, what he why did they ask this unnecessary to times I just thought that was pretty rude of him it was kind of unnecessary to bash a place that you're uh, attending People we spoke to okay. weren't too attending? happy about what he said It's pretty crazy They don't give a fuck People we talked to weren't so happy Oh <laughs> I mean Albuquerque's not that bad. You just got to go to, like, the good parts of it. And on- uh, Albuquerque's not bad. that bad. You just got to go to the good parts of it. You know what the good parts of Albuquerque are? Los Angeles. Twitter, people had mixed feelings. This person listed off Albuquerque staples like green chili and the sandias and said, what more could you want? Others agreed with Dalia, with one person saying they're from here and should be offended, but then said, you're right. Hashtag pass the meth. You're not. <laughs> she fucking hashtag pass the meth and on fire shortly after that tweet he posted again saying albuquerque and jacksonville crowds are awesome though actually but some people feel posts like that could scare tourists away they're probably not gonna want to come here now <laughs> that sucks he should probably apologize for that We also reached out to Albuquerque's tourism department. They say the post is unfortunate, but they'd like to know if something set Dalia off while he was here. They do say, however, they're appreciative of all the locals that stood up for the city. Kim, back to you. Okay, thanks, Rebecca. Now, we also reached out to Dalia through his Twitter. We have not yet heard back. He did have some nice things to say about Santa Fe in Twitter after performing at the Uh, Lensic. I mean, just so many just keep going and shit. We wonder what he thinks about Seattle. 
just like, okay, you know. Also, le- such a cliffhanger how they left it. <laughs> <laughs> Although he did have some nice things to say about Santa Fe. By the way, when she's saying that at the end, in the background, the next news is, I, I swear to God, the next segment, it says, child shot. Ah. <sighs> How did I beat out that story? Uh, One of Albuquerque's own slain. But I tweeted, it was a blank hole. Maybe Albuquerque, that's the problem. Start from there. Rename your theater and then move on. Dude, how on earth is that a thing? When I saw it, I laughed wholeheartedly. Dude, I laughed so hard when I was like, oh oh my God, dude. People are literally sliding into my DMs with these emojis. Fuck you, bro. Don't come back to New Mexico. Hey, guess what, man? I didn't say anything about New Mexico. I love New Mexico. Santa Fe, bitchin'. Albuquerque, uh, sucks. (laughs) Also, I will come back. I love the crowds. The crowds in Albuquerque are fucking awesome. The people in Albuquerque are awesome. Stop naming your theaters after cancer. That's all. Also, I don't even really give a fuck. I'm sure it's a fucking great place. I, be- I was there for eight hours twice. I'm sure it's fine. Th- how could you get upset about somebody saying something like that? I mean, I'm not talking about the people in the news. Obviously, they know. Even the newscasters are like, uh, this is what we're reporting on? Like, is this between this and one of the fucking kids we had sh- got shot? Well, let's lead with the, let's lead with the more depressing story. <laughs> anyway. Blue Apron. You know we love Blue Apron, and if you're a baby, you've tasted Blue Apron. That's how it goes. Because Blue Apron, I have yet to have a bad meal. Blue Apron sends me stuff. I don't even know I'm going to like it. I put it in my mouth, and it's beautiful. It feels like the end of a movie. It's so, so awesome. You want to taste what it's like in the, in the end of a movie in your mouth? Get Blue Apron. Cross the country without leaving your kitchen. With Blue Apron's best uh, of the U of the U.S. recipe series, featuring eight tasty weeks of recipes inspired by regional favorites. What if they had just a bunch of Albuquerque flavored stuff? Uh, Blue Apron helps me discover my inner chef. I cook it and I make it and I taste it and it feels like the end of a movie in my mouth. Uh, and you learn new recipes and techniques. I love cooking. Okay, with Blue Apron. Blue Apron has exposed me to delicious recipes I wouldn't have thought to try. With Blue Apron, the hard parts are done for me. Cooking isn't a burden anymore. In fact, it's actually fun to learn, especially if you're doing it with someone else, a little bit of a loved one, and you're having a good time, and then it feels like the middle of a movie because you're doing the montage style life, lifestyle. Um, and each meal you do that with. Uh, Blue Apron helps make cooking at home sustainable, uh, and it makes it a weekly routine. It's good for me. I get home Monday, Tuesday. Sometimes I do it on Monday, Tuesday, and then I go out back out on the road. To start making delicious, brag-worthy meals at home, also Instagram-looking, Instagram-picture-looking meals, without the hassle, try Blue Apron. Check out this week's menu and get $60 off when you visit blueapron.com slash congrats. That's blueapron.com slash congrats. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Calm. Stress is a worldwide epidemic. I feel it all the time. But guess what? Well, also, we're working longer hours. We're inundated with the constant news cycle. This is what affects me. And we're more connected than ever before. Honestly, those three things are my biggest problems. Long hours of work. The news cycle depresses the crap out of me. And uh, I can't get rid of my phone. Stress is a part of life, and it can very easily affect our overall well-being. It does for me. But calm. We're partnering with Calm. It's the number one app to help you reduce your anxiety and stress and to help you live better. More than 40 million people around the world are downloading it. Uh, have downloaded it already. If you go to calm.com slash congrats, you'll get 25% off a Calm premium subscription, within, which includes 
guided meditations on issues like anxiety, stress, and focus, including a brand new meditation each day. Uh, and uh, there are also sleep stories, which are bedtime stories for adults designed to help you relax. Head to the magical lavender fields of southern France with Stephen Fry or explore the moonlit jungles of Africa with Leona Lewis. They have soothing music and all that. Uh, right now, congrats listeners get 25% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash congrats. That's C-A-L-M dot com slash congrats. Get, unlim- get unlimited access of all of Calm's content today at calm.com slash congrats. Get calm and stop stressing. Just like me. Postmates, as usual, your stomach and the rest of your life are at war. You need to eat, but you can't stop doing what you're doing to deal with it, and the only fast things that deliver are not what you want. I use Postmates all the time, almost daily, I, maybe even daily. You can use any city. It's the best. Uh, Postmates, the app that adds a delivery option to your favorite restaurants. Imagine anything you want to eat delivered. You don't have to drive, park, or even talk on the phone to order. Just download the app and order. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, Postmates will bring you uh, what you want within the hour. And you can even see where your food is and track your driver. Uh, Postmates is your new long-term, uh, like it's like kind of like calling up a, like a, if you want to hang out like with a chick, like they would say booty call. That's what they have on the copy, but I don't want to say it's Munchie's booty call because that sounds corny, but still, that's very cool that, that you can do that with food. And also, if you're sexist, you can do it with chicks, but you know how it goes. We're more into loving relationships here at the Congratulations Podcast. Uh, For a limited time, Postmates is giving you $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app today and use code CONGRATS. That's CONGRATS uh, for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. Save the hassle. Get the food you love fast at Postmates with code CONGRATS. Congratulations is also brought to you by the Cash App, the best app to keep you babies doubtless. Um, All right, dude. How about that Albuquerque thing, man? That's unreal. We just love it, though. You know, I don't know. It's not like... Here's the thing. I'm moving the fan over to me. Here's the thing, dude. I don't know about... Um... Oh, and I moved it too far. And I'm pissed. I'm upset. Yeah. Could one fire do it? Yeah. Did I try to do it? To take it upon myself? Yes. Do I have a thing about me that makes me do that? Yes. Do I, th- do I live by the saying... Do it yourself if you want it done right. Yes. Did it work out? No. Did it all work out in the end because he fixed it after that? Yes. Could it have been sure? Yes. Was it? No. And that's fine. (laughs) Ah, shit, dude. Uh, The soundboard's all fucked, by the way. It's all good. Everyone's good. Everyone's everyone's fired. I'm fired. We're done. We quit. We quit. I quit. I quit. What's that from that movie? Fucking that thing you do. And you doing that thing you do. And you're rocking that thing you on and on it, baby. That was the movie where I thought Tom Hanks was going to fall off. I'm not saying the movie's bad. I just thought after all of the movies that he did, Philadelphia started fucking getting shit. He started winning the Oscar. I thought, oh, this is the movie where he just crumbles and then starts to do shit stuff. You... And we do that thing you do. <laughs> How was that music ever popular? Like, I know, obviously, that's not uh, a real song. But how was that style of music? Like, I like Bruce and Betty. I like Bruce and Jam. Like, what? How did that guy not get fucking a- a- a crucified? Um, or how about, what's that one? Do the twist, you know? Crazy. Uh, let's see what I have in my fucking. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just. Oh, that fan feels good. I wish I had it on the whole time. I wouldn't be fucking sweating. Did you guys see what Kodak Black said with the thing? So it sucks that uh, obviously it's horrible that uh, Nipsey Russell. Nipsey Hussle got uh Nipsey Russell. Nipsey Hussle got uh killed. Nipsey Russell's the guy he named it after. Comedian, an old comedian. Uh Nipsey Hussle got killed. Obviously that's horrible. I hate that shit, man. So many rappers are dying. It's like who, who, who's dying more? Rappers or comedians, dude? It's the weirdest shit ever. So uh so that is is obviously terrible. And then Kodak Black, that like fucking troglodyte was just like 
talking about how he wants to like holler at his at his widow which is just like what kind of a piece of shit are you for real you know how how can you be that big of a piece of shit like straight up you're a piece of shit you're a humdinger piece of shit to just be like i'm gonna holler at her i'll give her a year he said and then and then it was just like people just blew him up online which is stupid everyone's got to relax i did it too but i did it you know cuz who cares what i say although maybe people do but i don't know but anyway and then what's his name um ti came up with about this This is what T.I. said to Kodak Black, which I which made me be like, ah. Do I have it here? Is this it? <clears throat> look at this. Every time you go to... Bell button, so need to every time you go to look at a video, it's always the, the comment on the video. Find that link. See if you can just find the T.I. thing. Or it's probably on Instagram somewhere, right? It wasn't on his Instagram, actually? It was. Insta. Insta. Graham. T.I. Oh, I'm sure he took it down. Um, here we go. Oh, of course, dude. Oh, never mind. Insta. Hey. What's your feet in? Kodak Black. You out of pocket, nigga. Fix that shit. You out of pocket. What does that even mean, by the way? Doesn't that mean you have to pay something on your own? I came out of pocket. I, I paid for it. Don't worry, the company. I don't even need to be reimbursed. Out of line. Okay. That's something for sure that gangsters just had no idea what it meant, and then they just used it wrong, and then it became a thing. Put your feet in. Kodak Black. By the way, what's the girl in the background talking about? Put your feet in. <laughs> I love how T.I. was just like, didn't tell anyone to be quiet. Like if every time I do it, I'm like, everyone shut the fuck up. I'm going to do something. He's just like at the pool in like some apartment complex and he presses play and some girl's like, put your feet in to her kid. Hey, put your feet in. Kodak Black. You out of pocket, nigga. Fix that shit. Quickly. Expeditiously. Ah. Expeditiously. You got a pocket, nigga. Okay. Again. Ain't nobody else gonna say it, nigga. I done said it to you, nigga. And if I see you, I'm gonna say it in your face, nigga. You got a pocket, nigga. Okay. Three times. Get your... Oh, That's it. That's it. Then it cut off. Okay. So T.I. is 50. It, it's so 50 years old to, to not know when your Instagram video end, ends. Brian Cowell does it all the time. Brian Cowell will be like, hey, guys, I'm coming to Minnesota. Tickets are still left because, you know, that's what's up. I uh, just wanted you to know uh, to come grab tickets to my sh- And it'll end. And then, and then Kodak Black goes like this. Putting on his pants. Like, do that first. God, this guy looks he's all blue. Blue pants, blue shirt, tying his belt like he's a fucking, like he's doing karate with the Smurfs. Hey, start the video when you're ready. He's just bending down. He's not even in screen anymore. That was it. That was it. His hot response. Uh, there's actually a better response. There has to be a better response. Should I give you, send you that link so you know that link? All right, let me fucking find it. But that was that was uh, that was the. Uh, there's a better thing, Kodak Black. Hey. Oh my God. Kodak Black. But dude, I had a meeting with. Yeah, um, pack it, nigga. Ti one. Fix that shit. Quick and expeditiously. Uh, with, and he had three phones, bro. I had a meeting with Ti once. He had three phones. Let me tell you something, dude. Nothing's more disrespectful to everyone you would ever cross paths with than having three phones on you. Three, not two. 
He's like, yo, fuck doctors, motherfucker. Fuck doctors. I ain't got two phones. Fuck businessmen with them Blackberries and the iPhones. I got three phones. Motherfucker, I'm a businessman and a doctor. Uh, Instagram about T.I. Um, I just so... And by the way, how do you come... How do you follow a T.I. video and and make T.I. seem like he's speaking Shakespeare? T.I. was like, you got a pocket. Expeditiously. And then Kodak Black is like... I mean, fucking Kodak Black looks like that. Remember that movie Critters? Remember that fucking movie? Uh, so anyway, whatever. Uh, wow, you know what Kodak Black looks like? A Simpson. That's what he looks like. That's crazy, dude. He looks like Simpson. Wow. Even his hair is like triangles. A Simpson. Kodak Simpson. Um, but yeah, he said, let me just see, Instagram. Let me see what he said on... on uh... It's so fucked up, these... Oh, and then the game said something, too. Here we go, Kodak Black. Kodak Black, you had a pocket. You had a pocket. Oh, he took it down, Kodak Black. He's like, I don't give a fuck. He basically said, I don't give a fuck. I say what the fuck I meant it. I say what the fuck I meant it. If they want to take it to things, they want to talk about the things, then that's it. Then I said it that I meant it. Anyway, I got to go back to shooting The Simpsons. Sniper gang, you know? Loyalty, it says on his fucking biography. Loyalty outvalues everything. Yeah, okay. Um. Anyway, dude, it's like... The game said it too, though. Let me find the game one. The game, the game, the game. Instagram. Kodak. Black. Kodak Black. Here we go. I'm just going to fucking play this. Play it. Our comment won't play. Cool. Whatever, dude. I don't even give a fuck. I'm just going to... Here we go. Here, the, Okay, that's the... Oh, here's here's what he said. Here's what he said. Here's what Kodak Black said. I'm in close right now. He, 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 he... This is Kodak Black's respond response to T.I. T.I. say what? T.I. said fix that shit expeditiously. Man, listen. I said what I said. And then y'all, y'all trying to... Misconstrue what I said. I'm a man, no. listen, man, 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 fuck that. I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. If T.I. I don't care. I'm in drawers right now. Fuck y'all talking about. So, so the fuck that. Fuck y'all mean, bitch. What? <laughs> hey, they say so much. Mm. Uh-huh. I'm about to put his Nipsey Blue on right now. I don't give a damn what y'all talking about. Dude. He, he said, people are trying to misconstrue what I said. Literally said exactly what he meant, and people are upset about that. People are trying to, people are trying to say it's disrespectful that I said I would fuck this rapper who died his wife. When I said I would fuck this rapper who died his wife. Then the game. Kodak Black and any other nigga disrespecting my nigga Nip name. His legacy, his family, nigga. Keep my nigga name out your fucking mouth, nigga. Keep his girl's name out your fucking mouth, nigga. The fuck wrong with you new niggas? No respect having ass niggas, man. This new generation, y'all fucked up in the head, nigga. Stop disrespecting my nigga's name, man. This shit for real. My nigga died out here in these fucking streets, nigga. For the doing the right motherfucking thing. Doing good for fucking people. First thing niggas want to do after his untimely demise is disrespect his fucking name. Nah, nigga, I ain't going for that. Keep my nigga's name out your f- Sir, this is the last time I take Uber pool. <laughs> here, wait. Right here. Kodak Black. And then Tank. That's not it, bro. That's not it. I promise you that's not it. 
Oh. Yeah, listen to the guy. I next promise time. you. <laughs> hey man, I promise you that's not it. You're just saying too soon. Another guy that's you know trying to keep you from saying it. Period. You gotta you gotta get out of that, and you gotta. Um, you know, there are a lot of factors at play here. You know what I'm saying? Um, not only just the people that love and respect Nip um, and Lauren. Um, you know, you're you're you do business um, with us with Atlantic Records. Oh, that's that's a tough spot to be in, young fella. So I'm gonna just let you know right now. Just get out in front of that man. And if you meant no disrespect, if you meant no harm, you know. It's easier to say that than to play the, you know, play the tough guy. I don't... Fix this, bro. God, that guy's so R&B from the fucking bones up, dude. Look, man. That shit sounds like the beginning of an R&B song. Look, man. I'm down on bend knee right now, and I just want to say, man, get out in front of that before your heart goes cold. And, you know, there's people out there that will do you wrong. And you're in a tough spot. But, you know. Where's the fucking. That shit is so. That's a big. Yo, dog. Okay, so you secured the back and. Thank you. Okay. This is something. I mean, for the Dude, boys to men, bro. They were so the king of fucking doing one note into the other note with no bending, and they just just fucking so, dude. Fucking boys to men were like, you know what, boys to men were like, oh, let's make an R and B group. Fucking whoever was involved said, well, I know one thing. Fuck sleeves. And V-necks for life. They fucking killed it with no sleeves. This has 122 million views. Uh. Dude, wow. That's amazing. Man. Anyway, Kodak Black, that's so fucking, that's so disrespectful. And also we know it. And also stop being a tough guy. Because you would get your fucking ass handed to you. By these fucking other guys. The game, you know? I want to know who's who's uh I saw this I keep seeing this thing. I don't know if it's it's in like the fucking lexicon or whatever. Like there's a there's a thing you can do by get, you can get like a premium Snapchat, which is like a girl on 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 uh a girl on on um Instagram will be like sign up for my premium Snapchat and you can get videos and shows and stuff and it's the chick just showing her pussy and ass and tits on Snapchat and you pay for it. Let me ask you a question. Who the fuck in the world would pay to see naked girls online or on your phone when you simply don't have to? Hey, would you like to see someone naked? Sure. Would you like to do it for free or would you like to pay for it? Well, I'd like to do it for free. That's what everybody would say in the world. What kind of chump ass motherfucker would watch, would pay to watch a girl? Also, the fact that these girls call it a show is so fucking ridiculous. Like, that's a show, and also, The Producers is a show? You can go to fucking Broadway and watch Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, or you can watch a girl turn around. Ah! Those aren't both shows. One is. The other one is hooking. The other one is a disgrace. The other one didn't have good parents. <laughs> Whatever, dude. You know, and people will be like, you're slut shaming. Dude, get a dude. People get so mad at fucking making fun of shit. Dude, it doesn't matter. No matter what the fuck I say, someone's going to be pissed off. So there you go. Gloves are off, babies. Yeah, but it's empower. It's empowerment to show your asshole. No. It's not. It's easy as shit. Anything is, you know what? I'm scared. I was not, even the other shit too. It's like, I was scared to come forward and tell people about my, my fucking 
anxiety and this and that. It's And then people be like, that's so brave. It's not brave anymore. You're expected to do it. Nobody gets more championed nowadays than somebody saying, you know what, I'm going to go public with my problem. That's not brave anymore. You literally get coddled. It's the safest fucking thing you can do from now on is to say, hey, this happened to me and now I have anxiety about it. And I and and I'm and I'm going to be and I'm brave and I'm going to say that I have fucking OCD. It's not brave anymore. I think it was Bill Burr that was like, yeah, the first person that did it is brave. I can't remember. But it's just so fucking the world we live in. I saw a post the other day that was like, so I'm upset and I was scared to come up forward, but I'm doing it anyway. And everyone was just thousands and thousands of comments. Just, you're so brave. You know what's brave? Not doing that and just being a nobody instead. You know what I mean? It's the truth. Not telling people your problems and having nothing to identify with, that's that's brave nowadays. Being a simple, just fucking person that goes unnoticed without a profile on Instagram or anything like that with no YouTube hits, that's brave. To just be a person in the fucking world. Going to Target, going to fucking eat sandwiches, and nobody knows dick about it. That's the most brave shit. You know, oh, you woke up crying. Tell someone about it. Not brave. Don't tell someone about it. You're brave as shit. Keep crying. Deal with it yourself. That's what's brave now, dude. It all went fucking back full circle, you know. People started, it was brave in the fucking 80s and shit. That was brave as shit to show your feelings. That was brave. In the 60s, that shit was brave. Now, it's brave to just suck it up. And not tell a person about it. And have it become cancer. And then perform it at the fucking chemo theater in Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Um, we're going to do an elder. We don't, normally do el- we, we don't normally do elders. We do them every now and then because we can't just keep giving out elder pins. By the way, somebody came up to me in one of my shows recently and they were like wearing their elder pin. And I just thought it was so fucking cute, man. It was so sweet and so nice that it made me feel good that the guy was wearing it for the show. And he was like, man, you really we, – I love listening to you and this and that. And I, I was just – that shit just made me feel so good. So we got an elder. This guy wrote me a message on, on an email. One fire sent it to me. And – um it, the the I'm I'm not gonna read the good parts about me like he gives me a lot of compliments I don't want to fucking make this about me and that was very sweet and thank you very much for doing that I really appreciate you saying that but anyway he says stuff I'm stuff like this in the in, in the in the in the message I'm a fucking baby through and through man I've seen every single podcast you make it easy for me and my friends to relate to I know you're busy and you can't reply to shit because you're busy backing up that Brinks truck bro I'm just trying to help you do it I keep buying me undies I keep the cash app I use your congrats code. I just hope you can see this man, and I hope it somehow makes your day even an inch better. You get me through my day at 9 to 5. Nine to five. Um, I just hope you feel the love that I have for you and you, what, what you do for so many people. Please, please don't ever stop, man. Um, you're so awesome, and when I see you tired, when I see you sick, you're still on that podcast. You're sick and tired, but you still do it, and I know it really isn't for me, but that's what it feels like. Um, you know what, dude? Then it goes on and on, and he's just talking about me, so I don't need to read that. But um, his name's Chase Robinson, and uh, this kind of thing, man, this is why I'm going to make you an elder, because you reading this kind of shit makes me happy, and it makes me do the podcast. It makes me charge to do the podcast. It helps me do the podcast, and it keeps my spirits up, man. Like, it's a very uh, cyclical thing, man. Like, I, I, you know, you're telling me that it makes you feel good that I do this podcast. Uh, well, this podcast is for you, man. I think what you meant says is not just for you because it's for a lot of these babies out there, but this is for you. It's for me, and it's for you, and it's for all the babies out there. And, you know, I make jokes about how I do it for money, and I get fucking bags, and all I do, and I, you know, obviously I want to live that hedonistic lifestyle, and I want to fucking, uh, you know, we love sucking and fucking, but dude, this shit is like the real shit. And Chase Robinson, thank you for relaying your very sweet message. Uh, 
and you've listened to every episode, you keep those MeUndies on, and you fucking got the Cash App and all that shit. And, dude, I just I can't thank you enough for sending me such a sweet message that wasn't backhanded. For some reason, everything is always backhanded, but you just kept it real, dude. And thank you very much. And you're an elder now, dude, because this made my fucking day. And yeah, you're right. I am sick and I am tired and I still do do the podcast. And I do that because I know that I have a fan base out there that wants to listen to it. And and now I know you're out there and you want to listen to it. So I think about the fan base and I think about you guys. Also think about my pocket sometimes because I want to fucking keep the bring, bring start rolling in reverse. There's a lot of different things that make me want to do this podcast, but you're one of them, dude. So thank you very much. And now you got that pin coming to you, dude. So we'll be in touch with you and send you send send it out there. Um yeah, man, that message made my day. I got a forward from a producer, and he was just like, he was like, maybe make this guy an elder. And I was like, dude, you said it. Anyway, sign up for my premium Snapchat, dude. I'll show you my cock. I'll, I'll do a show where I just fucking whip it around like a helicopter. Can you guys do that, by the way? I can do that. I can do a real finesse, subtle move. I do a fucking finesse, subtle move. It's a real subtle. You have to be really in control of your body. You know who can't do it? Any of my friends, probably. They don't have fucking con- the connected tissue and the mind. Can you do this, bro? Can you do this? Boom, 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 boom. It's hard to do it. Make your mind do what you do. It's hard to do it. One part just goes, no. There's this guy called Stretchy Guy on Instagram, and he's like just always stretching. The guy looks like a guy who's just going to fucking die tomorrow, and he's the stretchiest guy in the world, and it's unbelievable. Uh, and we got to learn on fucking doing all this shit. I guess, I guess it's one goes down. And then you make those go. It's very hard. Fuck, man. Fuck, man. It's hard to make your brain do what your fucking body wants you to do. Anyway, my point is I could fucking move my dick around like a helicopter. Like, fuck P.D. Pablo. I took that shit to the next level. This shirt? I make my dick swing around like a helicopter. And I knock lamps over and shit like that. I mean, my, you know, it's just insane, dude. I take posts of frames, get knocked sideways. I mean, my cock goes nuts, dude. What if a girl, when you took a, your dick out for real, she went like this? What the fuck? That would make any guy feel so good. Girls do that shit to dudes, even if it's not that big. Go, whoa, what the fuck? Like, don't even do, don't even go like, wow, that's big. Like, really commit to it. Move back, open your mouth, not for sucking, but for astonishment, and then put your fucking hand above, above your, right above your titties and go, whoa, what the fuck? The guy's going to get scared because it's not what usually happens. But then he says, what? Go like this. That, that's, that is huge. But go like that. Make your fucking eyebrows do like this and make your chin go down and go, that is huge. And the guy goes, really? And you go, yes. I don't even know how the fuck you have that in your pants. And you walk around all day. What the fuck? Do I need to get you a sneaker to put on that thing? Jesus, what's it like having to buy two pairs of shoes because you need one extra to tie on the end of your fucking bell? Uh, anyway, dude. Uh, so, uh, okay, you want to do misconnections? Let's do misconnections. I got San Francisco misconnections. We got San Francisco misconnections. Here we go, dude. I bet the I bet the 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 homosexual ones are off the chain, dude. Cause that's gay city, right? Um here we go. Your need help with your paint car. Hey, one thing's for sure. He's foreign or seven. Your need help with your paint car. Hi there, I'm a guy who can help with your car. We repair and paint. Contact to me. What? Is that is it a is it a fuck thing? This is just regular? You're I mean, dude. Does this guy work for fucking Parts Plus Auto Parts? Hi there, I'm a guy who can help with your car. We repair and paint. Contact to me. Dude, do not contact me with unsolicited services or offers. Honestly, this is the first time I ever believed that. Do not contact me with unsolicited services or offers. Wow, dude. What's up, bro? Get it sexual, man. Also, I'll fuck you in your car. That's amazing, this guy. What the fuck's up with San Francisco? I thought this shit was going to be sexiest. 
Hell, and the sexy is all get out. And this guy just is like, I'll help you paint your car, bro. It's not even a, for money. He's just like, I get off on it. Paulina at Costco. This is for the very sexy Paulina at the Alame- at the Alamedan Costco. I wanted to talk to more, but my so was watching me like a hawk. I think he means son. Just put that in on there, buddy, at next time. Because you have a booty to die for. Uh, so disrespectful immediately. Actually, he kind of played it real nice. And then got disrespectful on your ass. Literally. I would love for you to just sit on face with that nice big booty. What is up with these motherfuckers, man? Why don't they put all the words in these goddamn things? It's unbelievable. This is for the... Ve- this for the very sexy Paulina at the Alameden Costco. I wanted to talk to more, but my show was watching me like a hawk because you have booty to die for. Who wrote this, Borat? I would love for you to just sit on face with that nice big booty. Do not contact me with unsolicited services or offers. Bro, that's just... Wow. The thought of leaving Costco and being like... Wow, that chick, man. You know what? I'll just fucking put it on Craigslist. Maybe she'll... It's just like a crazy thought to me. That's like a wacky-ass thought. Here we go. Looking for Greg. Greg, I remember how you liked to jack off while sucking my cock, and after I came, you would almost always do a few strokes more and shoot onto the towel sitting between your legs. Sure would enjoy getting back together. Sedescriptive. At least this guy fucking tells us... Greg, if Greg reads that, Greg knows, oh, I'm that guy. That was me. I remember when I give him those few extra strokes and then jerk it off in the the towel in between my legs. Greg, I remember how you liked to jack off while sucking my cock, and after I came, you would almost always do a few strokes more and shoot onto the towel sitting between your knees. Surun on sexual sentence. Do not contact me with unsolicited services or offers. Looking for Greg, a movie with Hugh Grant for sure. That would come out in 1997. Looking for Greg. About a man. About a man who jacks, who jacks off another man and then goes the extra few strokes. I'd like to put the towel between my leg and jerk off a little bit. And This summer. Jack off all over again. Hugh Grant in. What is it? Go back. Hugh Grant in. Looking for Greg. Are you the guy that used to let me jack off in your car and then after I came you jacked me off a few extra strokes and then shot and then I shot onto the tower sitting in between your knees? This summer, Hugh Grant. Will you jack me off a few times after I come? Jack off all over again. When your best friend's lover is your lover's best friend. This June... Bust a nut all over again. This June, bust a nut all over a towel and all over again. In. Looking for Greg. Oh, God, yes! August 2nd. All right, next one. Dollar Tree Coffee Guy. Okay. So vague, but not vague. Talked with you about coffee today in line at Dollar Store on Seb Road. Thought you were pretty cute. Maybe we can have some coffee sometime. LOL. <laughs> Do not contact me with this unsolicited service or offers. You know what? This is actually kind of sweet. That's kind of sweet. I, I hope this works out for this guy. That's cute. I wonder if he's talking about a guy or a girl. You don't even know. Should have described the girl, you know? What if the girl or the guy was like, oh, maybe it was me, but I don't know. It wasn't that specific. It was a dollar two coffee on Seb Road. And I was just not sure. Man, you know what? Pass. And then you will never, ever fucking experience the. I love when that guy comes in, dude, in that video. He goes, we going to celebrate. And he, go, and he comes up behind him and puts his hand on his shoulder. And goes, mm-hmm wasn't part of the song and he wanted to fucking do it and the other guy's so mad he was like this is my point this is my point to shine and you fucking put your hand on my shoulder and went mm-hmm, and you made it about you when i don't even really get those parts a lot you're always popping dude that would that's some alpha shit Tonight, we're gonna celebrate. 
Wow, that's so alpha, dude. I'm going to put that on my Instagram story right now. Go to see it. Even though we'll play it on the podcast t- tomorrow, but this is so alpha, dude. Look how al- Look how alpha Your this is. Look how alpha this is. Watch how but so alpha put his hand on his shoulder and did that. Okay, go to Instagram and look that was so alpha. Anyway. Okay. Uh that you know, I think that's pretty much it, yeah? We're good, dude. Remember we got the dates coming up, dude? Um Durham, uh Raleigh area. We're doing the Durham Raleigh area. We're doing um and that's in, in April twelfth coming up. Uh we got uh Las Vegas, Des Moines. Is it Des Moines? Or Des Moines? What is it? Des Moines? Des Moines. Des Moines. Des Moines. Sioux Falls. When I say Des Moines, it makes me want to say Sioux Falls, even though it's Sioux Falls. Soiks Falls. Des Moines and Soiks Falls. Fargo. Edmonton. Victoria. British Columbia. British Columbia, you know. Pick one. Hoover, Alabama, Memphis, Tennessee, Memphis, Chattanooga, Knoxville, Tarrytown, New York, Atlantic City, New Buffalo, Michigan, Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, Illinois, man. Got two big ones coming up there uh, at the Chicago Theater. Chicago Theater. All right, you guys. Uh, what, what do we got here? Um, uh, Chase Robinson, thanks for being the elder. Download the Cash app for free on the App Store or Google Play Market. Uh, and download the Chris D'Elia app where you can see the podcast before anybody else. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, remember, you can, you can get gift cards at the store, Crystalia store. Uh, just click the link. And then also we got new merch. We got the Do Not Contact Me With Unsolicited Services. Those prints are dope. They got them written all over the shirt. And that shit is kind of swaggy if you're filling it. Um, tweet us and rate and review that shit on iTunes. It really helps if you rate and review the shit. Uh, watch me on Comedians of the World, Man on Fire, and I'm on that show, You, coming up. And then also, I'm on the second season of You. And then also, I'm on this new uh, this new um, series called Huge in France with my buddy Gad uh, Elmaleh. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. name. But uh, he uh, has a new series coming out on Netflix uh, this, m- week, uh, this week, actually. Uh, and I'm in a few episodes of that where I play a version of myself. It's not myself, but it, it's a comedy. It's pretty funny. The show seemed pretty funny when we were shooting it. I'm, I'm excited to see it. So have a good one, guys. Thank you so much, my babies. And uh, you guys rock. Okay. Catch you later. Kodak Simpson. Congratulations. <laughs>